It was supposed to be an easy job for a team of men who repaired underwater pipes. But who knows, it will become a near-death experience for a 32-year deep-sea diver, Chris Lemons. Lemons lost all hope of seeing the sun again when he lay 300 feet below the surface. But he could cheat death with his friend's help and a miracle. Let us explore everything in detail in this video. The superhuman effort of his colleagues and his body lasting for 35 minutes on a 6-minute emergency tank kept Chris Lemons alive to resume his job and marry the love of his life. Chris Lemons is an Edinburgh-born saturation diver. Saturation divers are the ones who return to the surface after the dive to normalize the pressure. Saturation diving is advantageous in reducing the risk of decompression sickness. Chris used to work in the North Sea, diving from his ship Bibi Topaz in a diving bell and repairing oil rig structures. In September 2012, what started as a normal day for him turned into a nightmare. Chris Lemons, with his other two colleagues, Dave Uasa and Duncan Alcock, were lowered 91 meters in their diving bell to fix a pipe at Huntington Oil Field. The SIP was enduring 35 knot winds, but it was considered normal in the latter half of a year. Chris heard an alarm when he was in the middle of the repair. He had an earpiece in his helmet that connected him with the dive supervisor Craig, up in the ship. A warning from Craig quickly followed the alarm. He asked Chris to come out of the structure quickly. This was serious as Chris noticed a sense of urgency in Craig's voice. Next, the computer that kept the ship in position failed, and the ship was moving away from Chris and his companion Duncan. This was the beginning of a disaster. Chris's umbilical cable, a source of breathing gas and hot water, became snagged apart. The hot water aimed to keep the suits warm under the sea, where the temperature was below 3 degrees. Chris didn't take too long to figure out that he was in deep trouble. He had approximately 80,000 tons of boat pulling against him, and he was an anchor to it. Umbilical cable is everything. The only thing divers carry in addition to that is a bailout bottle. It is a set of standard diving cylinders fitted at the back with emergency gas. Chris stated that because he was at a great depth, he was consuming these cylinders at a quick rate, hence he had only six minutes of gas to sustain him. It needed to be longer to ensure his survival. The ship pulled the umbilical so tightly that it was bending the steel rack off the wall in the diving bell. Chris said that first, the communication with Craig ended then he felt the cable being snapped. After a while, he felt that the gas hose was stretched to the point that he had nothing to breathe. Within about 30 seconds, he opened the supply on his back. Soon after that, the umbilical cable broke, and he fell to the bottom of the sea like a shotgun. Now Chris is 300 feet down in absolute darkness at 2 a.m. the morning. Somehow, he managed to find the structure he had been working on and found a way to climb on top of it. The diving bell wasn't there, and Chris had already used up three minutes of gas. In Chris's words, he said that I this is where I would end my days. According to Chris, his chances for existence were next to none. He said he was on a countdown clock, which was ticking very fast. In one of the interviews, he admitted that he was powerless and had no hope for his existence. He thought of everyone in this home and the chaos his death would cause. Chris was hopeless, but not his colleagues. They put in an incredible superhuman effort to locate him. Dave, one of the colleagues, hauled him to the diving bell and the other colleague who went down with him, Duncan, gave him two miraculous breaths, and thanks God, Chris got back to life. Duncan probed him with questions and flushed his suit with hot water to warm him. Chris Lemons was groggy. 35 minutes had passed after he turned on his emergency supply of air. It was suspected that Chris might have suffered brain damage as he didn't have anything to breathe for so long. He was taken back to the ship's set, where he got medical attention. Once Chris was stable, they visited him there many times. As he got stable, they all celebrated, and there were many hugs. The team was thankful they would not spend four days in decompression chambers. 
over the next three days as the men depressurized on the towpass. How Chris survived without brain damage remains unclear. The oxygen in the diver's gas is approximately four times richer than normal, so his body may have been saturated with enough to keep him going. Chris explained it like this. He said that I assumed that the temperature of the water was too low, so it slowed down the functioning of his body. It is called hypothermia, where your body shuts down its functionality under extreme conditions. The gas divers usually breathe a very high concentration of oxygen that saturates Chris tissues and cells and allows him to survive. A few months later, Chris married his fiance Morag Martin, and even today, Morag is thankful to Duncan and Dave. She says that even now, her stomach churns when he hears the story, and she can't think how close she got to losing him and to be robbed of the beautiful life the couple was going to have. However, Chris continued to do his job and came back after three weeks. This was all from today's video hope you have liked it. For more cave diving and exploring tales like this one, keep visiting our channel.